Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Undercover Comics, coming to you from Seoul, South Korea. This is my first podcast, The Comic Book Pull-Up. And on this podcast, we'll discuss the state of the comic book community and culture. And today's topic is comic book speculation. Can comic book speculators be true comic book fans? Meaning, do speculators see intrinsic or instrumental value in their purchases? Stay tuned. Now, I figure we start with this topic because earlier this week, I got into a bit of a dust up online with some character. All right, and this dust up was about the Batman 89, Hella Risen 3, Batman 92, and 94 controversy regarding and surrounding the first full appearance of Punchline. Now, if you know anything about me or my channel, then you know that I'm American, I've been collecting since I was 12 years old, and I live in South Korea. Now, South Korea has no comic book shops. We have comic book cafes, which are basically cafes that have Japanese and Korean manga, but we have no American comic book shops here. And for that reason, I must order my comics. I have to have them shipped here from America. And to save on shipping costs, I pre-order my comics, I buy multiple copies, and I ship once per month. Now, the reason I buy multiple copies is because buying and shipping one comic will cost around $65. But... Buying and shipping 20 comics will cost around $75, so it's just more efficient to buy multiple copies. And I say all that to say that I have several copies of all three of these issues arriving soon, depending on the coronavirus and how quickly the government gets a handle on that. But the debate for first appearance or the character's first full appearance is irrelevant to me. It doesn't matter to me. I have all the issues. Okay, so I either have, depending on how you're looking at this, I either have no dog in this fight or I have all the dogs in this fight. So my interest is more about the story and the character's involvement in that story because that determines value to me as a fan and collector. Now, this issue began because I mentioned in a comment that Tenian, the creator of these comics, said that 92 was the most important book for the character punchline. I never mentioned first appearance. I never mentioned first full appearance. I never mentioned the word first. I never said it at all. Yet, this guy's reply was incredibly hostile, to say the least. And I'm gonna do my best to paraphrase his claims while leaving out all the personal attacks, okay? So first of all, there is no debate about the first full appearance. Again, as I said before, I never mentioned first appearance. Number two, Tenian is just trying to sell copies of 92. Finally, Hell Arisen 3 is the winner, and anyone who disagrees is a etc. etc. flying off the handlebars, not making a whole lot of sense. Now, I have a few things to say about that, excluding the personal attacks. But before I begin, I think it's important to note that I do believe in civil discourse, which he clearly was not looking for. I don't know him, but it seems that he was only interested in aggressively protecting his bag. And what I mean by that is his long box, okay? As I've said before, you show me your long box and I'll tell you what you believe, right? You don't have to say a word. You open up your long box and I can tell you what you believe, okay? If you have a Hulk 181, I can tell you what you believe. But if you have a Hulk 180, I can tell you what you believe. If you tell me what you have to gain, I will tell you what you believe. It's that simple for me. But let's go over his points and use that as a springboard to stimulate conversation and ultimately lead to my question. First of all, let's start with Tinian. Tinian is not on all duties. His job is to create a product that engages readers. That's his job. That's his gig. That's what he signed up for. That's what DC pays him for. Okay? DC's job, however is to not only edit and proofread these comics, but to schedule, design, market, and create demand for the books that they're publishing. In this case, the Hell Arisen 3 first appearance claims came directly from the publisher, not Tinian. His job is to echo that claim. I mean, honestly, really think about it. Do you think every Marvel writer wanted to have a War of the Realms tie-in? Do you think they wanted to have a Mary Jane cover? And what about the 2099? 
The obvious answer is no. But they do it because that's what DC wants. That's what their publisher wants as part of the marketing campaign. It's their job to perpetuate this. It's their job to help with the campaign, right? If they don't, in fact, they may get let go. They may be fired. Who knows? Now, yes, I will concede that Hella Risen 3 is a first appearance. It is a first appearance. I'm not here to tell you which first appearance it is, whether it's a first full body or just a first appearance. I'm not here to tell you which one it is. I don't care. I will also tell you that first full appearances and first appearances, that discussion has never been black and white. Ultimately, the market decides. The next issue is that these questions, these conflicts, these problems consistently happen amongst speculators, right? They consistently happen almost exclusively amongst speculators. The people who are out for blood, the people who are out the most vocal amongst us are the speculators. Now, I'm a buyer. I don't sell books. In fact, I haven't sold a book in almost 20 years. But this is important for speculators because think about it. You're buying a book because you believe that I will buy it, okay? And it's important that you note that your book is only worth what others will pay for it. And for most speculators, Hell Arisen 3 was not on their pull list. So they're standing in lines, hunting down a copy of a book that they don't care anything about. Which is fine because I'm not here to tell you how to collect. I'm not here to tell you how to buy, collect, or sell your comics. That is your business. Do your thing. Make your money. But... If you're buying these books because you believe they have value to other comic book collectors or speculators, then you should pay attention because it's very important that you understand what people value. And for me, personally, I value the story. I value the character's involvement in that story. And this is just me again. This is my opinion. I want to know what your opinion is down below in the comments. But a panel of a mouth doesn't do it for me. A few panels of a full body doesn't really do it for me. But the character's involvement does do it for me because I care about the story. I care about what the character's involvement is, what they're contributing to the story, what they bring to the story, what powers do they have, how do they think, how do they influence the story itself, how do they influence the other characters, right? This is what makes Joker so awesome because of his influence on the entire story, okay? Call me weird, but I actually do care about the story. I'm the guy who still buys Daredevil and the Goon, and they have no secondary market value at all they just don't okay which brings me to my question can true speculators be true fans i'm interested specifically for the people who make this this hobby their their occupation does it take the enjoyment out of collecting or do you use your speculation money to buy things that you do care about is that part of the collecting for you is this just a job is it just a hobby do you not even really care about the comics how much of speculation impedes on the hobby itself how much of speculation impedes on the joy of reading the comic of collecting the comic of having the comic let me know in the comments down below please be respectful and until next time peace